My name is Peter Raymer. Thanks for joining me. In this series of videos, I've been looking through using chain of commands on different object types. We've looked at classes and tables. Now let's look at how you can use chain of command on a form method. Uh, in this example, I've got the sales table um, form open. This is the form that shows the sales order in Microsoft Dynamics 365. Um, and specifically, I'm looking at this customer reference field. Let's pretend that we want to change what form would open if a user were to right click and select view details. Normally, uh, this functionality on um, certain controls will jump into a deeper form. So you might see this on um, an item. If we were to click on an item, we can um, see the item details. Um, you might see that for a customer. Well, let's pretend that we want to do this for a customer reference field. Maybe you've got a new custom table that your value would link to. Um, a great way to override the jump ref, as it's referred to, um, is in the init method of the form. So let's go ahead and do chain of command. Um, if I right click and create a new class, and I select my class object, Best practice is that I name the class after my base object, so in this case, sales table. And then what I've found is if you uh, provide the type of object you're modifying, that can help distinguish between your different chain of command classes in case you are using chain of command on the sales table table as well as on the sales table form. So I've said sales table underscore form, then I'm going to say underscore extension. And this part is required. Um, all chain of command classes must use that suffix underscore extension. All right, the next thing I want to do is actually go back to our sales table code. Um, I can view that by right clicking on the sales table form and saying view code. Um, and then I'm going to find the method that I would like to use chain of command on and copy that method definition uh, directly. So I'll copy that into here and add a close uh, parentheses. The next thing I need to do is add my extension of attribute. So to add an attribute, I use these square brackets, open, close, and then I can use the global function extension of, and inside of extension of, it takes a string, um, but rather than typing a string explicitly, it's a uh, best practice that we use a global function so that if that base object name ever changes um, we'll get a compile error, compile error and we'll know right away. So in this case I'm actually going to use the global function form string and then I can type in the name of our base object sales table. Okay next thing I need to do is I need to use the keyword final um, we're not allowed to extend chain of command classes any further, so we'll use that keyword final. We've got the underscore extension. And then lastly, uh, I need to call the base method uh, from within our method. So I use this keyword next, and I type in the method the exact same way um, that it's written there before. Sometimes uh, IntelliSense can get in the way, so I'll just go ahead and delete that and make sure that these two match. Uh, the base method returns void, so I don't need to return anything out of this method um, itself either. Now I can put code in here. My custom code um, goes here. Uh, and if I need to set a field's value to enabled or disabled, I can do that right from this form, um, right in this place. Okay, thanks so much for watching.